Let's try another problem. Bob moves for five seconds at a constant velocity of three meters per second. Starting from rest, what constant acceleration must Alice maintain to run the same distance as Bob in the same time? Again, Bob moves for five seconds at a constant velocity of three meters per second. Starting from rest, what constant acceleration must Alice maintain to run the same distance as Bob in the same time? So first, would you please copy this as carefully and accurately as you can into your notes, because I'm going to have to erase it in a moment. Uh, and then, um, please try the problem. Uh, as usual, please pause the video and give the problem a fair shot before you proceed. Also, please try to use the systematic techniques and notation that we've been talking about. Uh, however, let me warn you, this question is introducing some new issues that we haven't dealt with yet, so it might not be apparent to you how to attack this systematically, but do the best you can. Try to attack this as systematically and with, it, and with as careful a notation as possible. And then we'll go through it together. Step one, we're going to draw the path. Now, this problem um, introduces something new, which is multiple objects. Here we have two different objects, Bob and Alice. So we're going to need two different paths, one for Bob and one for Alice. So Bob's path would look like this. They didn't tell us which way Bob is moving, so let's suppose that Bob is moving horizontally to the right. Let's try uh, putting some more information here. They told us that Bob is moving at a constant velocity of 3 meters per second. So we could say the initial velocity is 3 meters per second, uh, and I should immediately want to put a sign in on that. So let's choose a positive direction. We want to choose our direction of motion as our positive direction. Since we're imagining that we're moving to the right, let's choose to the right as our positive direction. And then we can say that Bob's initial velocity is positive 3 meters per second. And Bob's final velocity will also be positive 3 meters per second because Bob is moving at a constant velocity. What else can we say about Bob here? Well, we want to try to get into the habit now of drawing velocity and acceleration vectors. So what does Bob's velocity vector look like? Here's Bob's velocity vector. We're imagining that Bob is moving to the right. Well, remember that the velocity tells you which way you're moving, so the velocity should be pointing to the right. Now, what's Bob's acceleration? I hope that was extremely easy for you. What's Bob's acceleration? We need to be very comfortable with the idea that at a constant velocity, your acceleration is zero. At constant velocity, your acceleration is zero. It's not good enough to say that at constant velocity, your acceleration is constant. That's true, but that's not nearly good enough. At constant velocity, your acceleration is zero. Because the acceleration tells you how the velocity is changing. The acceleration tells you how the velocity is changing. So if the velocity is not changing, the acceleration is zero. That's very important to be very comfortable and familiar with. How about Alice's path? Well, she's running the same distance, so I'm going to try to draw her path as being the same length. Uh, they said Alice was starting from rest. So I could say her initial velocity was zero meters per second. can draw her velocity vector. What does Alice's velocity vector look like? Well, Alice is also moving to the right. So here's Alice's velocity vector. And how about her acceleration? What does Alice's acceleration look like? Well, since she's starting from rest, she must be speeding up. If you're starting from rest and then you start moving, you must be speeding up. What does your acceleration look like when you're speeding up? When you're speeding up, your acceleration, remember, is parallel to your velocity. So since we've got Alice's velocity to the right, we should also have her acceleration to the right. Uh, and now I can say I actually um, didn't use very good notation up here. 
um, because uh, I didn't specify that this was Bob's velocity and Bob's acceleration. Uh, it's not good enough to just use V and A anymore because we need to know whose velocity and whose acceleration we're talking about. Just like down here, I talked about Alice's velocity and Alice's acceleration. I better do the same up here, so let's change that notation. So now we can say VB is to the right and AB is zero. You can see why we need to use good notation. We can't just say that A is zero because it's only Bob's acceleration that's zero. Alice's acceleration is not zero. So this is a very important notational technique for multiple object problems. Uh, when you've got more than one object, you must use subscripts um, to distinguish between the two objects. You can't use the same variable for things that are different. This seems uh, very trivial, but most people tend to actually ignore this when they're doing problems. You can't use the same symbol for two things that are different. You can't use the same symbol for two different things that are different. I can't use A for Bob's acceleration and also use it for Alice's acceleration, because they're different. And I can't use V for Bob's velocity and also V for Alice's velocity, because they're different too. Both of them are pointing to the right, but that doesn't mean that they're the same velocity. Um, all right, so use subscripts to show when variables are different from each other. We've already chosen a positive direction. Uh, as usual, we can skip step three because we're still dealing with one-dimensional motion. In one dimension, you don't need to break things down into components. So now we're ready to go on to our step four, uh, which is writing the kinematics variables. Well, let's start with Bob. Now we need to recognize that Bob is an example of constant velocity. They already told us that. Well, just a little while ago in the videos, we were learning that we do constant velocity problems differently from other constant acceleration problems. So what are the variables for Bob? Well, uh, we have Bob's displacement. Now, do I have to show this is Bob's displacement? Or can I use um, uh, the same symbol for both Bob and Alice? Well, looking along, I can see that eventually they tell us that they're running the same distance. Since they're running the same distance, um, I can use delta x for both Bob and Alice. So I don't need to put in a b here, because they told us they're running the same distance. So here's the other variables. Remember that when you have a constant velocity, there's no point distinguishing between the initial and the final. Since our velocity is constant, we don't need to distinguish between the initial and the final velocities. And what's Bob's acceleration going to be? What's Bob's acceleration? Well, again, that's something we already saw that should be very easy. When your velocity is constant, your acceleration is zero. Bob's acceleration here will be zero. I'm starting to feel kind of guilty about uh, leaving the units out so much. So I'm going to start trying to write down the units a little bit more. Maybe now that when we're writing down um, our givens underneath the variables, I'm going to start writing in the units. Uh, it really is good to be very conscious of units on physics problems. So here's Bob's acceleration, zero meters per second squared. Okay, so that's all the information uh, that we have here about Bob, and let's go on to Alice. Now, Alice is not moving at constant uh, velocity, because we know she started at zero and she's speeding up. So she's going to have normal kinematics variables. Displacement. Remember, we can use the same symbol for Alice's displacement and Bob's displacement, because they told us they were running the same distance. V initial Alice, V final Alice, Alice's acceleration, and the time.
Now, we definitely have to use different subscripts for Alice's acceleration and Bob's acceleration. Uh, there's no reason to think that those are the same. We know that Bob's acceleration is zero, but Alice's acceleration was not. Remember, you can't use the same symbol unless you know things are the same. You can't use the same symbol for two things unless you know they're the same. 